So let's continue with our uh, discussion. So F, so all these are going to, the flat champ is going to stand for uh, all the, all the hormones released from the pituitary and some more. So F is going to stand for FSH, LLH, A, ACTH, T4, TSH. Do keep in mind that T3 and T4 is going to be nuclear receptors, you know. C is going to be 2, calcitonin and CRH, okay. Both of them is going to be C. H is going to be um, HCG, that's the one I tend to forget. Um, ACE is going to be for ADH, but which one? It's a V2 one, not V1. Only V2 is going to be CAMP. M is going to be for MSH, and P is going to be for PTH. Now there is two extra ones which does not really fall under the mnemonic. Uh, they are GHRH and glucagon. Those two are also going to be under the flat champ plus, you know, the one that deals with CAMP pathway. Anyway, so we have devi deviated a lot more outside our question stem. Um, the whole point was to familiarize ourselves with the d different G-protein coupled receptors. So let's get back to the question and see what they are asking. Now, initially we saw that the question was asking um, about um, the MAP kinase pathway, right? So let's discuss the MAP kinase pathway. We know that the MAP kinase pathway is a heterotrimeric uh, receptor, okay? And it has two alpha and two beta receptors, right? It has two alpha, two beta. So initially what happens is that this receptor is going to bind with the ligand. And this ligand could be anything. In this case, it's growth, uh, growth factors. So it can be platelet-derived growth factor or fibroblast growth factor. Or it could also be insulin. That same kind of pathway is going to be followed, right? Now... Once insulin binds, or one the once the growth factor binds to the receptor, to the heterotrimeric receptor, which has two alpha and two beta, uh, beta chains, what happens is that this receptor autophosphorylates. Okay, it's going to autophosphorylate. So phosphorylation, phosphorylation happens. That is so. The first, okay, first, the first thing that's going to happen is number one, the receptor or the ligand will bind to receptor. That's the first thing that's going to happen. Second thing which is going to happen is, so from here, I'm going to draw it a big blob now. It's easier to follow like that. The second thing that's going to happen is this receptor is going to autophosphorylate. Okay, so imagine they're autophosphorylating. So phosphorus, phosphorate, phosphorus coming here. So auto phosphorylation is the second thing that's going to happen now this auto phosphorylation doesn't happen anywhere it happens at a specific site and that specific site has a tyrosine here right so that's why they say tyrosine residues are auto phosphorylated so I, I'm going to continue writing here that tyrosine residues also auto phosphorylates okay that tyrosine residues auto phosphorylates now that's the second thing that's going to happen now what's going to happen now now before i move on i also want to mention here is that you know when there is auto phosphorylation happening at the tyrosine residues now this particular one is now called irs okay we're calling this IRS, our, our insulin receptor substrate. Sub, sub, substrate. Um, it's, you know, not, it's just a fancy way of saying that the insulin receptor becomes phosphorylated at the tyrosine residues, and now we're going to start calling it IRS, our insulin receptor substrate. Now, what's going to happen now is different um, binding complexes is going to come and bind to this um, IRS, okay? So imagine now that this is our IRS, okay, with the phosphorylation there. 
different binding complex is going to come and bind here. It could be SOS, that's one uh, binding complex, okay? It could be SH1, it could be SH2, it could be SH3, okay? Different things uh, kind of goes in different directions. But the point is, these are all binding complex, and they're going to come and bind to our IRS, which is nothing but insulin receptor substrate. So I guess that would be the third thing. So different binding complex. Different binding complex will bind our IRS. That's the third thing. Now what's going to happen now? This binding complexes, binding to the IRS, is going to activate. It's going to activate RAS. Okay? So RAS is going to become inactive to active RAS. Okay? Now, what's the difference between inactive RAS and active RAS? Inactive RAS is bound to GDP. Active RAS is bound to G. TP. Okay, so that's how we know that the RAS is activated. So now we can say that RAS is going to be activated at point four. Now, once RAS becomes activated, it's going to trigger or it's going to phosphorylate a lot of the pathways inside the cell, starting with RAF. Okay, it's, RAF is one of them, and there's many things that's in a RAF is going to eventually uh, phosphorylate MAP. And this will lead to, um, you know, transcription in the nucleus. So that's the entire pathway. Okay, so now that we have an understanding of the topic, let's go to the question and see what they were asking. Now the question said that interaction of certain growth factors leads to the following sequence of events and now we are very much familiar with the different sequence. Binding of growth factor to the ligand, yes there was binding of growth factor to the ligand. Autophosphorylation of the tyrosine residues happened. Interaction with SOS protein, right? Activation of X protein, don't know what X protein is so far. Activation of RAS protein. So what happened from SOS to RAS. What's the one step that happened between SOS to RAS? To RAS. Now the one thing that happened between SOS to RAS is here is our SOS, here is our RAS, okay? The whole thing is that the GDP got transferred to GTP, right? So this must be our X, okay? This must be our X. So here we can say in the, pre in the previous page, we can say that activation of RAS protein happens after, uh, you know, SOS or SOS is activating um, the X protein, which is going to be GTP. So here, that's the answer.